G'day and welcome to Ben's Works. On this week's episode, we're making a desk clock. So I was at work the other day and I found this beautiful tiger moth. Now we have a lot of fluorescent lights around the place and they attract all the moths and I found this little guy on the ground. Unfortunately he had passed away so I figured I'd save it and preserve him for life. When I got home I pinned him to this piece of cardboard. I also added a piece of paper towel. That keeps him moist so he doesn't break. Now I'm going to take the paper towel out and I'm going to let him dry for a couple of days. So it's been a couple of days and you see here after taking the pins out he's kept his shape. So now I need to figure out a way of displaying this little guy. I thought about maybe turning it into a large pendant like this one. Or even something similar to my butterfly. But I just got off the phone to my mate Dan and he said remember that tray I made for one of my customers? Why don't I do something like that? So I got another off cut from that same tree stump and I figured I could put the moth in the middle there. And then I thought what could I make out of it? And then I remembered I had some of these little watch faces and I could put one in here and make a cool desk clock. So the first thing I need to do is go to my disc sender and flatten out these faces. I've been thinking how I want this to look when it's on a desk and I want it angled back a little bit so it's a bit easier to read the clock. So while I'm at the disc sander, I'm going to bevel this back edge, so I've got a nice flat surface for it to lean on. I've got the timber all sanded up now, I'll put the bevel on the back here. Now we'll have to put a couple of supports on there just to stop it from tipping over. But the next thing I need to do is look at casting some resin, but before I do that, I just want to clear all the debris out of the hole. So the next step is to pour a base layer of resin. Now so the resin doesn't flow all the way through, on the back side here I'm just going to put some clear packing tape. I think I'll add a couple more pieces just to be sure. I think that looks pretty good. Judging on how thick the moth is, I'm going to have to make this pour about 5 millimeters thick. The casting resin I'm using for this one is Art Cast by Just Resin and it's the slow set version. Make sure we're mixing resin, you mix really well. Try and do at least 2 minutes worth of mixing and make sure you scrape down all your sides. This is the point where we hope the tape's doing its job. I have a feeling some of this resin might soak into the timber, so I might just put a little bit more in. It looks like the tape's holding, we've got no leaks. Now I'm going to pop this in the pressure pot and we'll check on it later. So it's now the next day and it's come out of the pressure pot. The resin in the bottom has gone nice and hard, so we're now able to stick down the moth and pour the top layer. So the moth doesn't float when I put the top layer of resin on, I'm just going to stick him down with some UV resin. Now I've got him in the position that I want, I'm just going to take my UV torch and cure the resin. He's in position, he's all stuck down, so now I'm going to put on the top layer of resin. Do you guys remember when I was pouring in the resin for the butterfly, how the flow of the resin made the antenna break off? Well on this one, I'm going to try and pour nice and slow and in one spot, and hopefully his antennas stay intact. You can see the way his wing just folded in. Unfortunately I'm going to have to try and pour from the bottom and hopefully that forces the wing back out again. So it looks like I just need to try and readjust that wing a little bit. Hopefully we don't cause any damage. So I was able to reposition the wing without any dramas. So now I'm going to pop this in the pressure pot and we'll check it tomorrow. 
You know, since I made the butterfly video, a lot of people have asked, will my insect lose its color? And I've always said, I don't know. I've only casted one butterfly, I'm not sure. But now after casting the moth, I can say yes, there is a good chance it's gonna lose its color. You can see here that the moth's wings have become translucent and even its body doesn't have too much color left. But even though the moth has lost its color, it's not gonna stop me with this project. So the next thing I need to do is mix up some resin and fill in these little cracks. Now I'm gonna add some blue pigment to these to make them stand out. When I made my first wood slice and I added the pigment, all the resin kind of flowed away and I had a hard time keeping it in. So for this one, I'm just gonna take some UV resin. That way I can cure it a lot quicker to stop it falling out. I'm just gonna add some to this little plastic cup. Then I'm gonna add in some of this magic pearl pigment. Now I'm just gonna mix it together. It's a nice looking color. So now all I'm gonna do is force it into these cracks. Now I'm just gonna let that soak in for a couple of minutes before I put the torch on it. I think I might even go put this one out in the sun just to make sure it's nice and rock hard. So now that's all dry, the next step is to take it back to the disc sander and flatten this face. So I've got both sides sanded flat. You can see here a lot of the purple got sanded off. I knew that was gonna happen because these cracks weren't quite deep enough. Now the next thing we need to do is drill our hole for our watch face. I'll be using the same face that I used when I made this desk clock. I think I'm gonna position it in this top corner here. That way it looks like the moth is looking at it. Now I'm just gonna to go to my drill press and I'll be using a forcing a bit to drill this one. My next step is to create some supports on the back so it doesn't fall over. And to do that, I'll be using this Tasmanian oak. I made these holes slightly smaller than the dowel. That way I can put them in with just a friction fit. You'll notice that I made these longer than they need to be. That way I can shorten them and get my angle just right. That process was super easy to do on the disc sander because all I had to do was grind these dowels down until this edge here touched the sander. My next step is to give it one final sand. Now the sanding's all finished, there's one final step and that's to put a layer of resin on top. That way it'll clear this window up and seal the wood. And the resin I'll be using for that is called Diamond Coat from Just Resin. This is a thicker resin so it won't flow off the edge. And this one is now available in the US. And if you'd like to try it for yourself, you can get a 10% discount by using code word BENZWORKS10. There is one more thing I wanna add before I put the resin on. We've all gotta leave our mark. Make sure that when you're pouring any resin like this, that you make sure your workpiece is level. I'll end up doing two pours on this, so I'm just gonna do two real thin coats. I'm just gonna take a paintbrush and spread it all around. I'm also gonna go around and paint the sides. Don't stress too much how it looks because resin is self-leveling. So all those bumps you see there, they'll all flatten out. Now if you do get any bubbles that you can see on top, just grab yourself a blowtorch and just run over the top. Now I'm just gonna leave this sit till it dries, then I'll flip it over and we'll do the backside. Just like the front, once that's dry, I'll put a second coat over the top. While that's drying, I'm gonna coat these legs with some linseed oil. When I apply linseed oil, I like to put it on nice and thick, then I leave it for a couple of hours and wipe off the excess. I'm about to apply the second coat to the front, 
But before I do that, I'm just going to give it a quick run over with some 1200. Now for the final coat. Now it's time to put it all together and see how it looks. Now for the watch face, and we're done. Alright, let's take this clock outside and have a good look at it. Well guys, what did you think of that one? Even though the moth lost its colour, I still think it looks amazing. I love how when you look closely, you can see all the details on the moth. And even though we sanded most of the purple off, there's still hints of it there and it still looks cool. I could imagine this sitting on some manager's desk somewhere, in a big office, on a nice timber desk. I reckon it'd look awesome. Well that's all for this week's episode, I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.